everyone. Welcome to the special CUBE conversation. I'm John Furrier, your host of the CUBE here in our special Napa Valley remote location, connecting with Palo Alto as well as in Massachusetts and at VMware in Palo Alto. We've got a great conversation around edge technology with Dell Technologies, VMware and the CUBE, of course. Here, Luca, uh, Pierre Luca Ciudelli, Vice President of Product Manager at the Edge at Dell and Muneeb. You know, who's Dean, VP of Edge Computing at VMware, joining me for this Edge conversation. Gentlemen, thank you for joining us in the Cube. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you pleasure much. to be here. Yeah. So it's like the Edge is the hottest thing we've been talking about till, the, till forever. Now it's important because you're starting to see the technologies come together with multi-cloud on the horizon, but hybrid cloud in full enterprise mode right now with 5G, consumer size expanding, but on the business side, connecting the Edge is becoming a cloud product, cloud operations product that also includes the on-premises components. So we're in full distributed computing mode right now. And everyone's not denying this at all. Everyone's agreeing on it. So it's happening. So let's get into what's going on at the edge. How do you guys see edge evolving uh, in the marketplace right now? Yeah, let me get started there, John. Pleasure to be here and partnering with your Luca. Um, What's, you know, what's happened through the pandemic? You know, I know you kind of said we're all sitting far apart and talking, right? So um, a lot of the edge has been here forever, but uh, the pandemic has accelerated a lot of the edge initiatives, right? So people started working from home remotely, workloads now starting to move towards, towards the edge. Um, so as every industry, retailers think about socially disintermediated omni-channel retail experiences. Manufacturers think about you know, localized supply chains and you know, efficiencies of that um, as their global supply chains get all stressed. They're all you know, inventing and, and doing new things at the edge. So what's this driven, even though edge has been there all along, it's driving innovation towards the edge. Business processes, outcomes, you know, new applications, we call them edge native applications are being built now purpose for business outcomes at the edge. That's kind of a, a big change and acceleration in the last, you know, 15 months that we've seen. What's the trends driving this? Because, you know, obviously that is making a lot of sense, the modernization of the enterprise. It's happening a lot faster than many people had predicted. You know, day one operations, day two operations are buzzwords now. I mean, day one just basically means cloud and, and innovation. But now there's an operating aspect to this. What's the trend driving this edge native mindset and product requirement? Can you guys share that, that thought on reaction to that? Yeah, absolutely. I think the main trend as, as many said, uh, the acceleration uh, is bring because the use case and the transformation that needs to happen at the edge. This is was not thinking before, right? Uh, all of us, uh, when we go to a store now, we interact in different way. Uh, when we buy online, when we do all the normal things in life that we're doing today, we're doing different. This is required to bring more things at the edge. If we look at some data, we know that 50% uh, of what is going to be uh, happening in 2023 will be at the edge with 90% of what is from an application point of view exploding at the edge. Uh, to your point, why is that is important? As you see around all the verticals, manufacturing um, um, and also uh, other verticals. For example, the machinery manufacturing was not connected because at that time there was no need to be connected. Now we see more and more machinery need to be connected not only on the manufacturing floor, but also send things outside of manufacturing floor connected to other computers. So the necessity to bring more clothes, uh, and in Dell we have this notion of uh, where, what is the edge? You heard a lot, what, what is the edge? The edge is everything where you need to act on the information that you create. It really makes sense to bring things more there because you need to act on them. And so, the necessity to have more compute latency, it's very big things that we need to solve, security, and uh, also the day zero operation, day one, day two operation, and be able to drive everything from the cloud to the edge in the same way and same experience. Yeah, yeah look at that. I mean, you basically laid out the enterprise requirements for most things, which is pretty complicated, but has to run at scale. Um, but also, you know, I mean, he was mentioning uh, edge native. So I want to get your guys' reaction to, to our thoughts around this concept. I love this edge native conversation, but as customers much migrate to the cloud, okay, migration workloads with containerization, stateful data, these are real issues. So migrating is one thing, but now if I migrate, what's the difference between migrating an app or workloads 
versus edge native? Or, and, and how does someone get from migrating or replatforming to edge native? Can you guys share your thoughts on, on, on this evolution of migrating and then becoming truly edge native? Yeah, John, I think it's an interesting thing, right? So it's not, it's easy to say, I have a continuum from data center to the public cloud to the edge. Um, what we're finding is some of the applications you've migrated to the cloud. Um, if you think about it, both data center and clouds are very centralized compute models, right? So when you actually replatforming, refactoring applications for the cloud, what you're doing is you're fundamentally, you know, building for elastic scale, elastic growth of compute, elastic shrink of compute. When you're actually moving, so it's more compute heavy and you know elasticity of compute. When you're actually moving these workloads towards the edge, they're actually data dense. They're data heavy because to what Pierre Lico was saying before as well, there's a huge volume of data coming at you. That volume of data needs to be processed. That volume of data needs to be you know in real time and, and streamed and outcomes driven out of that. Now, do you want to take a lot of that data and, and push it all the way to the cloud or the data center to get processed? Or do you want to get it processed locally and, and come to some actions? Now, like Pierre Luca's example of the manufacturing plant, that time delay and latency could cost you millions of dollars of bad quality product because you missed the quality control in not replacing parts fast enough. So um, what we're seeing in this emergence of this new edge native applications is people are having to replatform, refactor applications to work them at the edge because of the attributes being different. Higher data density, real-time process requirements, scale, we talked about scale, we're all used to doing thousands of, maybe hundreds of data centers, but not tens of thousands of edge locations, right? So it's a different level of scale and security that you need. And that's where, you know, when we call edge native is fundamentally it has to operate very closely with the operation technology rather than the typical IT stance we take. Hey, Luca, yeah. I mean, tell about the product features and the requirements there because you know, mentioned, you mentioned a few things in there. I'll just jump, pick one thing out, which is data. Moving data around is very expensive and everyone knows that. But you got to move compute now and with serverless, okay? And in the cloud, you want that same kind of agility and capability at the edge. So you got to have, you got to have the devices at the edge be smart enough and be software enabled to handle this. How do you, do you deal with this in the product management side? Because you've got to prioritize all this. Absolutely, John, and to take on what Munib was saying, we think why uh, someone should look at uh, Dell and VMware together is because for be successful, um, there are a lot of POC going on and a lot of try and buy and a lot of uh, um, also verticalization of the use case. So what we here to offer is really what they say, generate the insight where they need and also consolidate the edge. Because we hear more, uh, as Monique pointed out, you know, you buy on the edge for the outcome. You buy for, you buy for, uh, you know, um, security. You buy for an outcome, for example, for predictive maintenance. Now, that buy of the outcome also prescribes a certain um, orchestration and a certain um, hardware and software that need to run, right? A certain deployment model. Now, in the same place, you can buy an outcome, for example, for smart building. Uh, all of us that we have an uh, advanced thermostat at, at home right now, but think about the buildings where you need to control all of that, you have solar panel and stuff like that. So that outcome, if you buy today, it runs on another thing. So you end up with a very uh, silos approach where you have a prolification actually of infrastructure. What we are proposing here is really that we need to simplify, we need to start with the building block approach that allow us to also bring this security. As you can think in, as the devices expand, as the computer you pointed out expanding thousand or hundreds of thousand, security becomes a big deal. And in some place you need to also be air gap insulated because you don't want even to go to the internet at all. So that's very important is this is a, how we perceive the things that we need to simplify the edge for our customer. That's great, let's get specific now. How can customers, whether they're Dell technologies and VMware customers or new customers, leverage the combination of VMware and Dell technologies for the edge? What is the solution? What can they, can they do? What are the things they can start with today? 
Pierre Luca, you want to get started with the platform sure. on the app side? So, Go ahead. Uh, um, today, what what really is the plot, the approach we have is a building block approach, as I said. So uh, in Dell, we can cover a lot of things for the edge, and we can cover from as small as a gateway to large to a cluster to multiple clusters from an entire data center and connect all of that. And then don't forget about our Apex project where you can buy all of these as a service as well. So with that layer that we have, where we have ruggedized server, we have um, the gateways, we have also software assets that they are very important for the edge, like our streaming data platform. So you need to collect this data. We need to stream this data and collect and have insight about this data so we can bring our streaming data platform. And all of this, by the way, it runs on top of VMware. So that's where VMware is coming to play. Yeah, no, I think, you know, building on the foundation there, John, is really about, you know, us providing then, having the platform t-shirt sizing as, you know, Pierre Luca went from small to large is important because what we recognize is not one size fits all at the edge because there are going to be all sizes requirements. Second, what we're doing is providing the multi-cloud connectivity, multi-cloud services that VMware knows. So bringing our software layer on top, providing developers to build applications, both VMs and containers, on the edge when they can use services from any cloud provider to build those applications. So VMware provides that you know, multi-cloud you know, platform, which gives ability for folks to build applications and in, you know, get services from any choice of their you know, cloud providers and run it on top of Dell you know, uh, portfolio and, and connect that all together with, very importantly, I would say, you know, distributed lifecycle management and operations everywhere because um, you're not going to find IT skill sets at the edge. This is at a retail store, it's at a manufacturing plan. So what you don't get is very you know, skilled IT skill sets. So the control plane happens to be in the cloud, which is centrally operated, whereas the data plane is all running at the edge. And we're able to, between VMware and Dell, bring our portfolios together to effectively you know, deliver upon this and provide what I would call a secure software supply chain. You can build applications securely and you know, deliver them from the data center to the cloud, to the edge, and manage it, provision it, troubleshoot it end to end. That's only possible with you know, VMware and, and Dell technologies, right? And, and, and John, let me call it out that um, one of the most important things obviously be, uh, with VMware, our VxRail product obviously is uh, uh, our running horse for most of the edge use case, including our server, ruggedized server, but I will say that uh, on the VMware, we are spending with the satellite nodes that they are basically nodes that you can put in your edge location and centralize. You can manage and you can do all the life cycle management. Also, if you don't need the storage part. So that's a, a key things that expand us uh, with the common um, also reference. Uh, if you guys will uh, uh, follow our session, we have a joint customer actually explain our Scotch industry how you will run the entire things with the edge and run VMware across with the VxRail. So great, great example. It's a great, it's a great call out too. And one of the things that's impressive, and I think this better together message comes out in that, in that conversation, is that you have a building block approach, you have a platform. These two things work together. And I think one of the things that's interesting to me, just as uh, you know, student of the industry over the years is that it's kind of an operating system in itself. It's the cloud, right? It's like, it's one big thing. So you could, the customers can build applications on top of it and get the benefits of it. I think this is kind of a systems thinking mindset, not just design thinking, but it's a systems architecture, if you will. I mean, it's not directly a systems, like a computer system, but holistically you can look at it as a systems uh, design problem. So customers are having more and more of these conversations around systems thinking can you guys share your reaction to that? Because we all saw the benefits of design thinking. Oh yeah, design thinking, you know, create a movement. Now we're in a new era, I think, where you're starting to see people talk about systems thinking. You, you actually, it's a great thing, John. I think you have to, you, you have to have system thinking. This everything we've been talking about so far is if you don't have system thinking, 
you're, you won't scale to tens of thousands of locations, you know, systematically, right? So design thinking is brilliant because it gives you very user interface, user experiences where users and developers get in and, and have a flexibility and usage and all of that. What you're talking about here is tens of thousands of locations and those locations don't have any skilled IT folks. So we're not used to breaking things down. So what you want to think about is more a, a scalable system design, which is like cookie cutter, push it out. And then, you know, it's got zero touch provisioning, you know, zero trust for uh, architecture with security built in and, you know, life distributed life cycle management. So you are making it, making the edge simple to operate. For that to happen, you need system thinking, where it is, you know, scalable, secure, you know, and scalable, not large, small, and highly distributed in a lot of locations. If you have a proper system thinking and design system put in, then, you know, it'll operate itself. This is how we've done industry for a long time, right? And the, and the consequences have to be factored in. If something breaks, there's consequences in systems. It's a ripple effect, it's a, or a network effect. Oh, there's all kinds of things are going on. Great stuff. Um, here, look, yeah, you want me, to comment me, on the systems thinking? I'd love to get your reaction to that. Yeah, let me let me say one thing about uh, the system thing. So I think system thinking is very important also on top of the solution that we put together. As we discussed before, right? Normally in the vertical, like the uh, manufacturing, people buy outcome. So at the end of the day, the people, they interact directly with the, with the outcome. They look at the solution and we will offer together the solution. So we have the VMware layer, we are partnering with other people to, um, to offer an end-to-end -end solution. To many point, uh, the manufacturing floor person will not really care if he's interact with the VxTrail or a VMware, but he wants to interact with the end application. So that's why it's very important. Beside that, we need to make the uh, infrastructure transparent and easy. So that's that's really a good point. That's how the thing's going. That's why you need to system architect the things and system thinking the things. I think this edge conversation brings up was, is bringing up a, a new modern era of, of opportunity. Um, and there are problems to solve and work the problem. The data is one we talked earlier. Are there considerations that you guys see out there for how architects in the enterprise who are thinking about the future of their business, how they want to set themselves up for the modern era that's coming as here for edge, for um, low latency, built-in security, these are table stake enterprise features now. So is there new, and data, obviously the cost of data and the tsunami of more data, local data to be processed, leveraging the benefits of the cloud in a systematic way. These are all new hard problems that if solved, create huge opportunities. Or as Jerry Chen, former VMware uh, CTO of the cloud said, castles on the cloud. You can have the best of the cloud if you do this right. What are some considerations that people should think about from an architecture standpoint? I think uh, from my perspective, and then let Monique speaking about this, but um, think about how you can standardize from the beginning. So don't end up with the uh, thousand of different options uh, because then it's difficult to manage. And then um, have a wide approach, look at all the different edge uh, sites as, as a building block of that big edge thing. And also, um, look at how you can uh, not only scale, but bring security in, the, in all the things that you think, right? This is fundamental. Uh, in the past, we always left security as the last uh, things that we thought about. Uh, at the edge is fundamental. And edge is changing the requirement. As I explained at the beginning of this interview, edge has a very different requirement. And if we satisfy those requirements, then we are successful not only at the edge, but we are successful at the core and in the cloud because we can bring, as Munip say, that application in and out, in and out where it's needed. So with that, Munip, you want to say something about sure. that? Sure, thanks, thanks, Pierre Luca. And I think, uh, you know, you, Pierre Luca is absolutely right. I think you have to standardize, you have to scale, only then you can standardize easily without doing bespoke. The, you know, as an architect, one of the key things to consider also, there is, you know, I think, you know, John, you, you brought up 5G at the beginning, but we didn't follow up with that, right? So we actually do believe that the service provider market who are building out the next generation 5G 
they have capacity, they have connectivity closest to the edge as well. So I actually do think that as architects think about it, a player, as you build out your data center, your cloud, and now towards the edge, the last mile between the, the cloud and the edge is actually owned by the service providers. The service providers will play a critical role in you know, placing these workloads closer to the edge, but not necessarily all far away from the cloud. So you know, architect design, think about scalability, intrinsic security, and you know, uh, having you know, different sizes. But one important factor, I actually do believe that the service providers have the opportunity of a lifetime in front of them to become like the hyperscalers for the edge. Because if they can provide not just infrastructure network services, IaaS, PaaS, and SaaS, they will be able to deliver extensively whole amount of edge compute services for the enterprises, which is something that architects have to think about to actually not make a bottleneck to all go up to the cloud, but they can actually be distributed at the service provider. Yeah, and, and I totally agree on the service provider. They have the real estate, they got the facilities, they got the connectivity at the edge, and the footprint, what used to be a base station is becoming smaller and smaller and higher density. So like you're it's going to start to see, and by the way, and there's more, more edges. <laughs> it's not the one tower anymore. It's, it's everywhere. <laughs> These little points of access points are, are thousands of points of millions of points of light, if you will, kind of to the network. Yeah. Huge. Okay, gentlemen, thank you so much. I want to just say, I really appreciate this conversation. Uh, systems thinking, edge, it's the future. And an edge is an architectural shift where there's only advantages, not a lot of downside. If you plan it right, the opportunity with the cloud is amazing. So thank you so much for coming on, sharing your insights here on the Cube conversation. Thank you, thank you very much, John. Thank okay, you I'm John Furrier job. with theCUBE here in Napa remotely in Palo Alto and Palo Alto in Massachusetts for a remote interview. Great conversation with great guests. Thanks for watching.